So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, speakers and adjudicators, that's the first several issues of my name. Because, you know, when the names are mentioned, my what's really difficult is uh, this one. Stein. But what do people say? So, if they speak German, they hear Stein, and that means stone. So, that's not really uh, a compliment. Uh, or maybe if they speak English, they say stain. Uh, that's not a compliment either. Or maybe they say S T I J N, and that's not really nice either. Uh, and in fact, I, I once had it, I was at a, a huge uh, festival, and I was introduced uh, to a girl by a friend of mine, and he said, Look here, yeah, this guy, he's called Stan. And I said, Okay, well, what, what do we have to say? I mean, my, my name is already mentioned. So I said, Yes, with I J. And that was really awkward, and I never saw her again, so don't say STIGF. But why am I here? I'm here to get into the finals. And there are two ways for me to get into the public speaking finals. The first way is to talk about the topic that I got, which is let the newspapers die. And second is to persuade the adjudicators to introduce an ESL break. Because I think there are, well, at most eight ESL speakers in this public speaking contest. So automatically, I will be in the final <laughs> if I will be, uh, well, if there is an ESL break. So let's first talk about the ESL break. Why is there a need of the ESL break? Why would it be fair? Well, first of all, we are really courageous here as ESL speakers to, you know, to compete against these guys from Canada, for instance, that you know, they cost an ocean to be here. They must be really good, and I just took the train from the Netherlands. So, um, you know, and, and, and then you have the Jamaicans that, you know, from what? they speak as fast as you say, bulk and run, it's really hard to <laughs> understand what they say. I just feel disadvantaged, you know. I can't do Shakespeare or a poem in a second language within three minutes. Um, that's really hard. And then finally, you know, it would just be cool to be a world's final public speaking finalist, not even Bill Clinton has that title. I mean, it's really special to have been there. So on to my second topic, I don't have much time left. Why should the newspapers die? Now, I know from my own experience that newspapers should die. I worked for a newspaper, which was the university newspaper, and I didn't really agree with their course of action and their ideas about the newspaper. And they didn't really agree with the fact that I, um, with what I said, but also with the fact that I disagreed. So after a while, I had a fight. And uh, well, I didn't agree with that, but they didn't really care that I didn't agree. So I thought, die. And well, today the newspaper isn't there anymore, which doesn't have to do anything with me, it just happened. But I'm glad it died, you know, I know nice. Um, so, to wrap up, I can only say let the newspapers die and raise dissent, and please allow me a spot in the ESL. Thank you.
Today we now have a different kind of embracing of Jesus. There are now different kinds of changes. We now have people who are homosexual. We now have people who are changing from black to white. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you a good um, example. Whereby we see that Michael Jackson was black first of all. But every time he said, it doesn't matter if you're black or white, you went white. And white. And white. Then we begin to wonder, ladies and gentlemen, does it matter or does it not matter? Well, today I'm here to tell you that it does matter. We are here to embrace a kind of difference that has never been there before. We are here to embrace, ladies and gentlemen, the person who is the talent, a cross-section between a Chinese man and a black man. This is the difference of today. Let us not be fooled to think that the world is still the same. The world has changed. Like I said before, the only constant thing today, ladies and gentlemen, is change. This is a world where we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that this job has no punchline, ladies and gentlemen. We now have difference in our world, ladies and gentlemen. We need to know that our skin color was not given to us by marriage, but our skin color was we were born into it. We need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that our sex, ladies and gentlemen, was not given to us by marriage, but our sex, ladies and gentlemen, was given to us by birth. We did not apply to go to the university that is the, the family that you are born in. You did not apply, ladies and gentlemen, to be poor or rich. You did not apply to be female or male. You were just born into it. So this job has no more punchline, ladies and gentlemen. The more we embrace a kind of difference that has never been there before, it is the more that we're going to embrace a globalized world. A different world from what we've seen before. A different world, ladies and gentlemen, that is taking us beyond the horizon, ladies and gentlemen. And today I stand to say, ladies and gentlemen, this job which was Africa had no more patch that. You look at me today, ladies and gentlemen, and you think why you're just people with an African accent. Because I am bicultural. I am now a mixture, ladies and gentlemen, of the westernized society and an African society. Where do I belong? What kind of difference do we want to embrace? So I say to you today, ladies and gentlemen, let's move forward. Let's be open-minded because this job has no more punchline. Thank you. Much. 
But the last thing I tell you is that songs could really be helpful, right? Because, uh, for example, when you're not in the mood to talk, you just put on instrumental, right? When you know, patriotic, you put on your national anthem, and when you want to create a joke, I don't know, like you can play Pakistan's national anthem. <laughs> 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 So, however, I mean, it's like two people like me could possibly just put on the theme song of BBT. So, if I had to pick one, that would be the song of mine. Thank you. 
was, or the worst person that Latvia ever got, was pre-2008, Latvia was a booming economy. They were getting a lot of easy credit into the region, and they were using this to fund a lot of investments, mainly in their housing sector, and investments going abroad into Russia. This booming credit created, uh, created rapid growth within the country. Street. However, it also made room for a lot of bad loans and bad investments that were being covered up by the general growth of the country. So what happened is, as 2008 rolls around, and your credit crunch kicks in, and people don't have the liquidity to pass around anymore, the country trust starts to crash, and you get a huge crisis, and the country, the country goes into a recession. What happens then? In 2009, the prime minister that takes over introduces austerity measures. And on face value, austerity might be the worst prison that you've ever received. It really hurts <laughs> Government spending got cut to teachers and to hospitals, and it was a team by a really, really bad president. However, within two years, they actually reversed GDP growth, and the GDP went to a 5.5% growth, thanks to austerity. Thanks to this president that they thought was enti uh, entirely terrible for their nation, it actually ended up helping them, and helped them get into Latvia and the rest of the Baltic region back on track to continue to grow their economy. Export to by over 30%, being a great, great president. The second example I'd like to talk about, about what would seem like the worst president ever, actually being the best president ever, was with the Sepoy Rebellion in India. So the Sepoy Rebellion in India came up from the fact that there were these Muslim Sepoy uh, soldiers who were fighting for the British who were occupying the country at the time. Now the British made them use these bullet cartridges that had pig grease lined on bullets, and when they bit them off to load them, they were actually eating the pig grease. The Sepoy uh, of soldiers, when they found this out, were enraged. They were, they were being forced to break their religious conduct to be the Sepoy uh, uh, fighters for the British. Now, this may seem like the worst present ever, forcing pig grease into your back. However, because the, the Sepoy Rebellion uh, happened, because it sparked the beginnings of the Indian Revolution, the, in, in India actually was able to get an independence that is important. So we believe that while this may seem like the worst president ever for the Sepoy Warriors, it actually became the best president ever for the Indian uh, country as a whole because they were able to uh, achieve it. My third example that I'd like to talk about is the third is the cha it's a change in China's economy from an export-driven country to a uh, more locally driven uh, domestic growth country. So at first it would seem that the shift away from export or from being an export-oriented country like China is that you, that you lose a lot of easy, cheap GDP. However, with new regulations such as the, uh, with the ability for banks to now lend to SMEs within China, we'll actually see that although they will have some uh, hard times, they'll be very beneficial for the Chinese government and the stable GDP growth to shift to a more uh, inward driven economy. So, for these three reasons, I believe that while the presidents you get may seem like the worst presidents you've ever received, if you see that, uh, if you look at the benefits of them, they might actually be the best presidents. Like, this, we are. <laughs> 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 we're totally like, distinguishable. 
people from our fat, lazy culture. And that's great, because now I know what I can get my McDonald's, uh, my McDonald's giant soda here, too. And that's great, because then I never have to lose the comforts at home that I'm used to growing up. Now, you know, that's, that's something I've always been really excited about. But also, I think really noticeable is how actually notable soft drinks are in the world, right? Because I think that's also something that's really great. You go to uh, you go to foreign countries, you go to like the most totalitarian uh, state, and they'll recognize the Coke symbol. They'll recognize exactly what it is. How about we teach some other things like democracy or freedom or women's rights? <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal, guys. That's the rights and justice we want to push into the world. Something, something super important to them. But at the end of the day, I think we don't really have anything to say about soft drinks. I think. Oh, last thing actually I actually want to say. This is on behalf of everyone who's spoken, probably not just myself. Is the speaker of participation award now? I love that you guys are using this award because if you notice, half the contestants had a crowd and half the contestants didn't have a crowd. And I love that we're all using that the same metric. So for everyone who came up and gave a speech, they didn't get any like applause or laughter. Remember that they were speaking to an empty room, and that's probably good. At the end of the day, though, go home for the soft drink at all.
Northern Caribbean University in Jamaica. Right? So we have a lot of hills and valleys and mountains, right? Well, really, we have a mountain and so on. And I stepped out of this room and this lady tells me that my topic is mountains and clan. So I'm like, all right, I'm not going to be literal and say the mountains have climbed at my feet, but I'm going to talk about the mountains that climbed through my lifestyle. Then I thought, I just came to Germany, right? So I climbed a whole lot of mountains from Jamaica to the United States to Berlin, right? Because I went up into the airplane and went right over the, the mountains, like nine, close nine, and eight hours of flight total. But then I realized, when I reached to Berlin, there was a whole lot of mountains that I climbed. Now, I stepped out of the airport, and this guy was right beside me. He started talking and talking and yapping and yapping. And I'm like, oh my god, what type of mountain is this I've got to climb? I need to get rid of it. So he's there yapping and trying to flirt with me and everything. I said, like, stop it, man. Then it's like, all right, finally, sorry, no sorry. She picked me up and I said, all right, finally get rid of this guy. Went to the hotel there, waiting for my room, and then this guy shows up right next to me. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> he's like, demanded that I go up with him tonight. So I climbed up a little point telling him that I'm not going out with him tonight. And this is the reason why. Dear Mr. Ego Phil, the shame of a man. I wonder how you managed not to fall off the face of the earth. It's like your ego is high enough to defeat the force of gravity. So hollow your brain I can hear in the distance. Your loose screws bouncing as though with the intent of making a property. And probably the time you spend speaking that load of um, I think I should keep that in. Might I add, will get you nowhere. You could do something to control the source of an athlete. I mean, the severe case of tinea pedis. And no, I don't speak of it literally. You see, some days a woman will put off with you, but then there are other days when a woman like you will tell you the truth. You see, <laughs> no, your face is not the sunshine of my day, nor is it a chunk of my glare. And <laughs> no, your eyes. Is it the sunset at the stone edge in England, nor is your touch elegant to be the horse air on my canvas? You see, there's a class of us, and then there is a class of us. The latter is not for the ordinary, it is for the unique, the ones that are beautiful, the ones to whom the blessings are bountiful. The goals of character, the class of which none can ever surpass. So, this I say to you with no regrets. Your chance is a negative exponent of not. Permit me one to be. Please grant me this request of my last and it all shall cease. If God were to come, my last day. If God were to come and take us all, please don't come. Or then it won't be heaven at all. Most sincerely, Jaleesa Smith. Do you think I should give him? Or do you think I shouldn't? But I'm just needing to be doing the sky right now. So I'm going to do sky, sky, sky. Thank <laughs> you. 
There's virtually not, not even a single point in your life and everything goes wrong, whatever you might believe because what does everything go wrong? It is actually when you think that things are going wrong. When you think negatively, as long as you're living, you always have a second chance. You always have, uh, you always have a chance to change and bring about a change that is very important. And why, why do we think that things are wrong? Because we consider that there is one right and one wrong. We are in this habit of classifying things in an absolute manner, rather than doing it in a positive manner, in a manner that do great things. And we are constantly looking to the positive side of what we have at this point in time. And when does everything go wrong? Is I believe that there is not even a single point when things go wrong. And now I've got much to say, and this is when everything goes wrong. <laughs> Anglo-Saxon tribe called the German Dutchies. Uh, never mind my melody. After which this great country called the Germany is named. Now centuries ago my people were forcibly taken from our homeland to the warm, picturesque paradise island called Jamaica. Yes. Hope that's the story. <laughs> so as all good public speakers know, when you're given a topic and you're as nervous as I am, as nervous as a dog having pea seeds, just talk about whatever you want to talk about and forget about the topic given to you. What's my topic? The mysterious man in the corner. And when you're getting into and when you're getting into the finals, depends on the propensity of your audience to laugh, to chuckle through over with laughter, even though it's not comedy night. Beg them to demand them to laugh. <laughs> That's my way of begging you to laugh. <laughs> so 
and maybe this center gets back down with you, following in the tradition of everyone here. But not to put it, it's just like this. So my topic is the man in the corner. I'm going to share with you a little poem about the man of spirit. A child was I who walked with God, a youth always his path to trod. Not once was I with faith unsure, has never reason to explore. But then the years pre adulthood, the dawn of mama misery. It was then my mind with questions flood, a God for me who never stood. Where are you, so called mighty one? How so weak when she be strong? A God as when all is wrong, on God and caring selfish man. For these and other reasons great, I pledged my God always to hate. I looked, but never could I see <coughs> God whose hand still carries me. A God, though silent, spoke out loud in everything in the world around. Through birds and beaches, blossoms bloom, the earth declares God's presence moves. But when the sad thoughts do arise, I hasten closer to his side. Not one shall I for evidence. I know God reigns with providence. Thank you. Now what I am coming and telling you today 
is that there is no other way to get out of that point. All you are going to get is some, some stories about all the bad things that you are. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm going to tell you about what I did with my experience. I actually moved into men. So Where you're so drunk that you can't actually 
much about what the person looks like at the end of the night. And you're going to bring them on, you're going to have a good time, you just don't know. In that case, it's always okay to be a little bit lonely and not get fired from your job. I'm so proud of this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is this? <laughs> 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 <laughs>